Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna do some kind of like ridiculous build. Um, so it's gonna be the latest of everything that I have except the motors are kind of um, old. Uh, these I have salvaged from my Martian because I hate my Martian and I've only flown them like a couple times and this is just such a waste. These are the Emacs 2306 uh, 2306 2750 kV so I really want to use them on this one as you can see they're custom made here I'm just kidding I just had to extend the wires because um I needed to extend the wires so this won't take regular ESCs and it only takes 4 and one ESC so it should be pretty cool so for frame we're using the lightning the Transtech lightning pro uh, this is not the Kevlar one the Kevlar one is still on the way uh, currently making this video it's still on the way and um, uh, we're gonna do something else with that one for receiver, I'm going to use an XM Plus because that's the only thing I have room for in here. So this is a very good receiver for FR Sky. And for camera, um, I got three of these. I don't know if you guys seen my past videos. I've built the budget build quad with this camera. And then I'll have, this is the second one. But at the current time of me making this, this is the second day after that day. So I've not even flown or tested these just yet. Um, however, I did like what I saw from them of how I put them together. Uh, this doesn't come with it. This was from the uh, XM. I just put it here. So this should be very good. Um, I still don't know. I have not tested it in the field. Hopefully it performs. If it doesn't, we'll just swap it out and I'll let you guys know how these went. But I'm going to stick this on here now. Now, for VTX, I'm going to be using the Matek, uh, the Matek VTX. And just forget these two pins. I had them right when I was doing the review or just testing the power consumption of this guy. So we'll be removing these two right here. Um, for flight controller, we're using the AirBot omnibus f4 pro corner this supports telemetry it has telemetry pads but we're not going to be using them or we might use them from the esc here and on the bottom here we have the airbot typhoon 32 which is a 32-bit esc with current sensing and telemetry so it's going to be pretty sick pretty sweet um however it's just a little bit kind of annoying i think that's the word to actually connect the um telemetry on here because i have to use little tiny 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 pads so let me remove everything off of here and then let's see the first step and let's get started guys all right guys so i've gone ahead and removed everything now this is the typhoon 32 bit esc and um the reason why i didn't test this is because it's obviously it's going to have noise there's not many capacitors on there and they do provide you and they do state that it will and it does so what we're going to do is we're going to use this the provided capacitor which is the 2200 microfarad uh, 25 volt low ESR capacitor so we'll be doing that now in a little bit however I just want to quickly go over the telemetry pads on this guy um, I wish Airbot would have included it with the JST connection here but they have not and on the specifications or the manual or the pinout whatever you want to call it um, they do show us where are the telemetry pads so the telemetry pads or you know circles or blobs or whatever you want to call them <clears throat> are the little circles that are called SWK. So here's SWK, so that would be for motor 2. This is telemetry coming to your flight controller. And here is the SWK for what is this, motor 3. And motor 1's SWK. No, this would be motor 1. This is motor 3. SWK are here for motor 3. And this is SWK for motor 4. Now, I don't think it does, I don't think it matters um, the orientation you actually take them from, or you think it is. I think they all just connect together and they have some kind of protocol where they, they know who's who and what's what, um, I believe. So, we're going to be doing that and um, we're going to be running little tiny, tiny silicone wires. Hopefully, I could find some small silicone wires. And when we place this guy on here, uh, we do have some kind of, where is it? It's right here, a JST, which is a wire that's just going to connect from here to here, and it provides everything power to this guy. Um, one thing to note, the telemetry pad, so basically from the SWK, we're going to be running it to this one, which is RX1. RX1, and the, all of them basically are RX1, so RX1 is the telemetry for the ESC on this flight controller. This is a pretty nice flight controller, so it's going to be pretty sweet. So this should not need soft mounting, and I'm not going to soft mount it because it has that you know, that anti-vibration gel and it's kind of, you know, suspended in midair in there. So it's gonna be pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and just prepare the ESC first and then um, we'll take it from there. All right guys, so actually, actually this is the correct orientation and I really don't like it, but I mean, I can't do much about it. So um, I could have twisted it, but I really don't wanna put up with it because I don't know anything about the telemetry, how it's working at the current moment of time because I didn't really read up on it. So we're just going to pretend that, you know, guy that knows nothing about telemetry 
all i know is those paths go for telemetry and we're gonna see if the telemetry works and um yeah and that's it really so let's prepare the pads here um let me get these solder we're gonna start with the esc pads and we are going to add the low esr capacitor that was provided by airbot so which is good perfect it's a pretty thick esc too that's very good <clears throat> be very careful because you don't want the solder to really splash anywhere because that'll just it'll be a nightmare basically basically you'll just ruin it and you don't want to do that just nice and easy So I don't recommend connecting an XC60 connector here, like just right away, like straight ahead, uh, just because you 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 will most definitely almost break it. Um, I've broken boards like that just on landing because the other XC60 will be on the bottom. Depending on how you land, it'll just pop, just crack that open. So you want to try to avoid that. And we are going to hold on, I, don't, I don't have the correct head to do this so that's very scary let me show you guys if we're gonna do telemetry so maybe we come back for telemetry later this one let's just say this one's pretty easy and let me just get the uh, tweezers here this one where are they okay so this one is it's all right but this is the one that worries me really look at this just just a little mistake boop you bridged them good luck fixing them i could fix them but you know, it, it just, you don't, you have no idea how painful that is. Um, so I really don't want to ruin it just yet. And I really hope AirBot's watching because, yeah, this is just, yeah, it's like, for example, I'm going to come do this SWK right here. So let's see. First of all, I'm using the wrong type of head. Right, that one was pretty okay um we're gonna try our luck here if it works good then we're good to go so here is swk we got that one this one should be easy also so let's just see let's heat up the pad okay here we got another swk And where's the other one? So it's this one here. It's the second one down there. This one's a bit tricky, but I would recommend we would hit it since I'm right handed. So I'm going to twist it like so and let it focus. I don't know why it's not focusing. It's very annoying. Okay, there we go. And this one here is kind of tricky. It looks easier when you I zoom in, but um, yeah. For something like this, you got to keep that the solder tip very clean. It's becoming impossible to keep it clean. So what I want to do is I just want to touch, and you guys can't see anything. I want to just heat up the pad and just touch the solder on it. I don't want to do anything else. It's a lot harder than it looks. And it's hard too. Um, there we go. So. I know I'm going to get crap because I'm using the wrong type of head, but I'm not going to wait for it to cool and do all that kind of stuff. Okay. 
There we go. We got it. It's not the best, but I mean, it's something. Where's the other one now? There it is. Oh no, we got that one. We have that one. And there it is, right? There. Oh, wow. This is just ridiculous. There we go. That was a bit scary, I would say. Okay. Let's clean that off. All right, so we got our telemetry pads. Now we're gonna have to find some nice little tiny silicone wires here. And let me go do that and I'll be right back. All right, so what I found is one of my receivers from my FlySky come with this PWM one. And this is silicone and they're tiny so that's very good so all we're gonna do is just gonna cut four and use four of these so that's gonna be very good and very well easier than anything else really so there we go I don't know how long I should make them but I'm gonna keep them long right now just so it can give us you know in case of problems we can always take it apart and just check the area so this build might be a bit longer than expected so let's see here so silicone's awesome just pinch it it'll come off and perfect as you can see it's very tiny um, <clears throat> this should be easier than putting solder because we're not going to put solder on these wires or should we well, it's recommended we do so they don't pop up anywhere. Actually, yeah, we're gonna do that. So let's just grab a little solder here. Just have it floating in the air. You know what's funny? You know, I remember when Joshua Bardwell did the um, you know, his PID masterclass, and then I was going through videos. And then everyone was like commenting like, oh, you need to add P, oh, you need to drop your D, oh, you need to, it was so funny. And now Joshua did a video on soldering, and now everyone's going to tell everyone how to solder. I think it's funny. I didn't watch that video though, but I don't know what he did there. I haven't had time to really watch it. So there we go. We got one. It's perfect. It's very nice. Let me show you guys. I have no idea how close is that to that. Let's maybe move it a little bit or should we just leave it? Let's try to move it a little bit. Talk about small pads, that's tiny. There we go. That's perfect. Look, I can lift the whole thing with it. So that's a good first sign. Let's go grab another wire now. So I usually try to pinch them, but I have no nails. There we go. All right, actually, I think I'm going to skip over this because um, it's just going to be time consuming. So let me get that done with, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I left the last, which is the hardest. I left it for last, and then we're just going to see how I'm going to do it here. So there it is. Oh, my God, there it is. This is very tricky. Okay, so let's see how I'm gonna do this guy. I'm sorry if the camera goes out of focus. I'm not gonna pay any attention to the camera right now. And there we go. Oof, that's awesome. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit more. That's really perfect. I can't really show you from the side, but yeah. Maybe we could do this. Yeah, it's very good. So 
let's just lay it down flat. Lay down flat, guys. All right, let's zoom out. Try and do that. There we go. And we have our telemetry. Here's one, here's another one, here's another one, and here is another one. So it's very good. So now what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to grab my XT60 connector and just solder that in real quick and solder in the motors. I'm gonna skip over the motors, it's pretty obvious. Just solder any three wires and you're good to go. And then uh, we'll take it from there. All right guys, so the motors are in place, the motor wires. And as you can see here, I run them like this. The back ones I have to be very careful because the standoffs or the side plates won't be able to connect if they are any you know, longer than that. So I have to kind of like run them on top of each other. So it, was, it went pretty well. So what, we, what I will do is actually I'll put regular electrical tape around here to hold it in place and keep this up. Maybe it'll look nice. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, right now, as you can see, we have our telemetry pads. So what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to set up the XT60 connector with the uh, low ESR capacitor that was provided by AirBot. And once we finish that, then we take it to the next step. However, I've never heard of the brand that they're using. And um, I might want to use a Panasonic, but I'm not sure yet. So I'm just going to do it with, with what they provided us with. And then... Um, we can see what will happen and then how to do the, f the fixes that are necessary to enable us to, enable us to uh, be able to fly it properly. But hopefully everything should be great. Um, hopefully they've tested this enough and, um, uh, and here's another test for us and basically a review. So let me find that capacitor and get an XC6 connector and I'll solder those in place. And then we can take it from there and start soldering the um, flight controller. So give me a moment and I'll be back guys. Alright guys, so what happened here, um, soldering in the motors, I've put in the XC60 connector with the um, low ESR capacitor, it's pretty damn fat. So I had to get kind of creative, so I put tape around this. Uh, luckily it's 25 volt, if it was 35 volt it would have been like that big. So yeah. I also took a ground and a power from the battery, as you can see here, and these are the telemetry wires. We're going to get to those right now. Now what I did is, um, like I did in my previous builds, I'm going to put a 12 volt regulator. Well this is a, a selectable regulator with this potentiometer. And um, I will leave a link in the description below. And if you ever use this, set it between 8.2 volts to 8.5 volts because that it runs the cleanest on that voltage. I've tested it and um, I, am, I, I know this for sure. So I've tested on my oscilloscope but I still have not made the video about it. But yeah, 8.2 to 8.5 volts is the best voltage on this guy so we're gonna do that now I'm just gonna install him so as you can see you can see in the back here it says in minus in plus so that'll be in here and the out would just go to the VTX so that's what we're gonna do here um, however I don't know actually we're gonna keep this for a little bit later so uh, let's just see how the stack is going to be and uh, we'll take it from there so we got everything we need here this is the front Alright, so let's just move these wires. Actually, we could actually even install these on the bottom here. Pretty sweet. So this would be the back. Motor 1, 2, yeah. So this is the back here. Make sure we got all our wires. Alright, and something is touching. What is touching? Or am I just tripping? No, I'm just tripping. Alright, so... As you can see, we could just now route the telemetries, but we have to know which one's which here. So this would probably be here, this would probably be here, and this would probably be here, and this is here. This seems about right, I think. Well, I don't think it even matters, really. Motor 4, yeah, this can only be for this motor, then this one can only be for that motor, this one can only be for that motor, so yeah. Okay, so we are correct like this. So we're going to set this up here, and this guy up here. All right, so now I'm gonna prepare this. Let's, let's actually just move this and let's prepare the pads on this guy and see what pads we're actually going to use here. So let's just set it up like so. And, right. Okay. So here we go. Let's put up this orientation. 
and we're gonna zoom in. So what I'm going to do is, since we're not gonna solder the uh, motor wires because they're gonna be th connected with the JST connector, um, we're gonna see, as you can see, you can see right here, M1 and then RX1. So we need RX1, that's telemetry. And I believe we can also just put all of them basically on one pad. You know, just wrap them all up together and then just set them up. But um, let's, let's do it this way. I'm sure we can, but um, yeah, I just want to try this now. So what do we need now? So we got all those ready. Let's flip it upside down. Let's prepare everything while we're here. So video in, video out, as you can see right there. So we're going to do that. Should we do that from the bottom? Top, because we're going to stick them through the top. Okay. Okay. Right. Careful not to melt that connector. And those are good. So let's see the five volt pads. Now here you have to be careful because if we ever wanted to access the SD card, um, the orientation is not very good. So let's flip this here. So the middle middle one is five volt and that's ground. That's another five volt and that's another ground. Okay. And actually I didn't even read where we put S bus. Hmm. We'll check that in a little bit. So for right now, let's just get. We need. We need to bridge. Well, this is gonna be pretty tricky to bridge actually. So if we wanted five, um, the RAM to be five volt, then we had to bridge these two top two together. Actually, let's try to do that now. It's gonna be very difficult actually, because they're just holes. So, yeah. Anyways, let's give it a try. I want it to be 5 volts. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult, I guess. So what we need is actually just like a small wire. So here we have some, oh, well, I have some cut up on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this, it's a little tiny silicone wire. And um, I'm just going to rip a pretty fat piece. Twisting it, as you can see here. I'm gonna add a little solder to it. Let's move the board out of the way. Okay, that's perfect. So, I'll clean that up for you. So we need this one, RAM, the top one, this one, to be 5 volts. So we have to bridge these two together. And they're very small holes. They're not the regular sized uh, pinholes. So let me bring tweezers so you guys can see, actually. So we put solder on the little tiny wire here. And I need to grab it like this. Okay. All right. So here is the 5 volt. Tap it. it, should somewhat hold, and it did hold, it's perfectly cool. Here's a little bit of a tricky part now, so we're going to remove that whole thing, and we are going to cut here, so as you can see, you can see it's sticking up like that, so let's see about how much, so as you can see I bent it all the way, and Put it right there. Hopefully we are not going to bridge the second one. And we're good. So we basically bridged it. And now when we put solder, it should just stick there and kind of bridge the two together. So that's the theory. And hopefully that's that's what's gonna happen. So there you go. So they're not touching on the bottom. And now when we add the solder, in theory, they should somewhat bridge in a way. And it just actually disappeared, which is awesome. So 
So this is pretty retarded to be honest. I think I bridged them, yeah. Wow. That was annoying. All right, so we bridged the RAM to five volts. So up here now, we have five volt for camera. And hopefully. All right, what else do we need? Let's prepare the five volt for the, um, okay, the top middle and then the middle middle. So yeah, okay. So this one is five volt. And this one is five volt, I believe. No, actually, bridge ground and RX3. So this is 5 volt. And this is 5 volt. Might as well just do all the pads and then figure it out later. Huh? Alright, let's actually check the diagram they sent us so we can see where is S bus and we should take it from there. So let's see here. S bus is on UART three. So on receive three is S bus. Okay. And receive three is this one right here. Yeah. So this is S bus right there. That one. So that's gonna be our S bus. And do we have to do any kind of jumpers? Oops. Okay, RX1, okay, remove disable invert on UART3. Alright guys, so SBUS is going to be here, but we're going to leave it for later. So right now what we're going to do is actually we're going to prepare, set up the camera wire here. So it shouldn't be that long because it's, um, it's not that far of a distance from this to the uh, thingy. To the camera from the flight control of the camera so there we go we got our three stripped wires all right now we're gonna hit them a little bit of solder Okay, and okay, and okay. So our camera is on one of these here, and we're gonna figure that out right now. So the top is V in. Okay, so that's camera, V in, you know, video in from the camera and then video out to the VTX. So the top row is video in and then five volt and then ground. So, and I lost orientation. Okay, so right is ground. So here's ground. So we're gonna start with ground. No, we're gonna start with video. Video is this one next to the connector. And it's better to start here because it's gonna be easier for us with the soldering station since I'm right handed so we're just gonna hit this like so it goes in so beautiful I love that so we said ground was the last one now what I'm gonna do is twist the wires as you can see they came undone here and I want it to kind of stay clean because we don't want any wires playing around in this because it's very tight fit for everything like I just barely got it to um, fit everything in and then I forgot about the voltage regulator and we're gonna have to figure that out now soon anyways all right so now we're gonna do the 5 volt and move the ground so it doesn't kind of give you 
I'm kind of weird. That's perfect. And this one. Sorry, my finger is going to be in the way of a thumb. good it's very nice they actually went through the hole so it's pretty sweet the ground is kind of dirty but who cares it's just ground um all right so it's good all right to zoom out a little bit okay so we got this done with what do we have to do next let's do okay we're giving power to the vtx from the voltage regulator but I'm gonna give it ground from the flight controller here so I think this will be long enough for right now so what I'm gonna do is cut this guy and I'm gonna run ground from this guy and basically from the voltage regulator I'm just gonna connect the positive and I think that should be good um, I did that on that previous budget build but I still haven't flown it and it seemed okay when I armed it and just kind of played with the motor so anyways, we'll know eventually all the good and bad, and then we can just document it. And you guys can see it, and then we learn as we go. So, all right, so this is gonna be for ground for the VTX right now. Later on, I'll be connecting this, but I just want them to be grounded in the same area. Oh, shit. That's awesome. See, that's why you have to keep the tip clean. It's the last thing we needed. Okay. Alright, forget it's good. <clears throat> Perfect. Just double checking that that's ground. Ram V out. Correct. Perfect. And let's get actually another wire for the VTX. I'm going to take it here from the camera wire. Oh, they're nice. So this is going to be for the um, the wire that's going to be going to the VTX. The video out here. So let's just do that since we're here. Add a little solder. And then we're going to trim it off. Let's do it now. So it's right there. And then let's zoom in. Hopefully this wire is going to be long enough. And it should. It should, definitely should. So that's the noise of me cleaning the soldering tip. So you're going to see the dirty side, but look at the clean side. So we're going to hit it with the clean side. We're going to melt that hole and then try to guide that wire through. And we did it. So that's awesome. That's sweet. I mean, if you master this technique, it's just amazing. And lately I've just been getting better and better at it. So I really love this. And this really does just um, make things a lot better. Look at that. It's basically flush. There's, you can't see anything in there. Plus, don't forget this PDBs. I mean, this... Um, all the one flight controller is pretty thick so yeah so we don't want to get the wires in all the way through here so we could actually put SD cards if we needed to and hopefully we don't need to and I hate to so what is the next step now so we got our ground we have our positive which can the voltage regulator still and actually we need wires for the S bus now so I kind of forgot what is S bus here and what is positive and negative and we're gonna figure that out in a little bit but let's first get enough wires so good here I have two wires left over that are silicone and I'm gonna cut them and I'm gonna use them so this would be the 5 volt now for the 
receiver. And um, I don't know where to put it just yet, but we will figure it out right now. So all we need is basically one five volt. So if we take a look at this really, and we see, we said RX3 is S bus. So we're gonna have to do this watch. Uh, where's the, here it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it with, okay, so we're gonna say RX3, five volt and ground, just these three right here. So these three are two down, that's ground, okay. So in theory, two down, shit, I lost it again. Yeah, it would be right here, it would be ground, five volt, S bus. So let's just double check that. Yeah, S bus, five volt, ground, yeah. So S bus, five volt, and ground. So the black is gonna go here. Let's prepare the wires. It's kind of confusing every time you flip it over. I kind of keep forgetting everything. Actually, I just forgot it again right now. Okay, I'm just putting some solder on the wires here. You know how Joshua just made that video? I don't know if one of you guys going to see this, but um, he made that video about the soldering, and I just uploaded the budget build like an hour ago, and I've already gotten someone to tell me that my soldering is not so good. It's not funny. I think it's hilarious. So S bus and then 5 volt. So this is S bus and this is 5 volt. So that would be 5 volt right there. There we go, perfect. And then here. This time we didn't get so lucky. Oh no, we did, that's awesome. Sorry guys, you didn't see that, but that went in just beautiful. <clears throat> and we're gonna get one more wire on this one for it's going to be for the S bus. I don't know if I'll skip this whole part because it seems like it's taking forever. It's been 20 minutes right now doing something. All right, so here we go. All right, there was the wire. I'm gonna trim it off a little bit, put solder on it. Make sure the tip is clean and it's actually not clean, but that's fine. We're going to use the other side. And there we go. It just went in absolutely beautiful. So I think it was TX to TX. That's how the VTX works. And what do we have here? We have TX3, you know, RX3. TX6 we have not used. So I think what I'm going to do is, is this one right here. TX6, I will connect it to, um, what is it, TX6, I'm going to connect it to the TX on the VTX, so it has a lot of X's, so we can actually control it through the OSD, so that I want to do, because that is very good, um, I really want that, since we have that, and I really want to take advantage of it, so that's very good, and I think what I'm going to do is actually going to cut one of these guys off, shorten them out a little bit actually. And I'm gonna take the yellow, it's better. So I'm basically cutting off one of the telemetry wires from the um, ESC because they're long and anyways, we're gonna make them shorter. So there we go, we ripped that one. Let me zoom out for you guys. And yeah, there we go, need this guy. I'm just spinning them right now, so it makes our life easier. Shorten them out. Put some on the pad here. So I think it was this one. TX6, yeah. So TX6, we're going to connect to VTX2 so we can control it. Because I don't know how we're going to be able to press the buttons, or it'll be impossible. But I don't think it's going to be impossible, but. Since we have that option, why don't we just take advantage of it? And I can't pick up this wire for the life of me. Come on. OK. 
Okay, there we go. So what I do is I just begin heating the pad like back and forth like this and then just like basically pushing the wire with this and then just guiding it through the hole and it just goes through and it's just absolutely beautiful and it does. That's what we're going to do right now. So then it just went in. Perfect. And it grips very good. Very good as well. All right. Well, we have a beautiful rainbow. <laughs> What's the next step? So... We have the camera, we have everything for the VTX. The only thing is left to do is actually install the telemetry wires now. So where's the front? So this is the front and this is the back here. So this would be up here and that would be up there. Okay, good. So it's a bit chaotic now, but it's fine. So we're gonna grab this telemetry wire. We're gonna just solder it onto here. So actually I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm just gonna solder on all the telemetry wires and come back so I cut down time a little bit. Alright guys, so the telemetry wires are all soldered in as you can see here in the corner, in the corner, and all on the, all on the corner. So that's all you art one. Now <clears throat> let's see what is the next step. And well let's actually put the standoffs now. So let me just skip over this just to save time. Alright guys, so we have the VTX now, and what we're going to do is we are going to just set up the pad. So we need the TX to control it, and we need video, so we need these two, and there's our power, it's already there, so yeah, so let's just do that right now. And I think the way that I'm going to do this is solder them on top. Yeah, we're just going to solder them on top, so it'll be stacked like this, and we're just going to solder it up top. And hopefully this doesn't interfere with the gyro since the gyro is so sensitive. So yeah, so we need these two to the edge. So I think this one was video and this one was the TX. So there we go. And let me just double check. So okay, we have the negatives there. So the bottom one is video, so yeah. If I forget that, and you guys remember, and you see until the bottom of this video, let me just double check it, yeah, okay. And this is the back, so I want it on the, no, actually I wanted it on the front. Kind of forgot. Yeah, this won't fit on the back, so we need it on the front, so I have to remove the standoff here, and actually put it over here. So, right there. Because it won't fit, the frame won't just, won't close after that. So, is anything touching? I feel like something's touching or am I just tripping? Maybe the wires? This part is somewhat touching a little bit, I think, this here. But, you know what? It's gonna be good. We're gonna see how that goes. If it doesn't go good for us, we will know and we will come back and visit, revisit it and then see what we could improve, so. Yeah, so I do these so you guys don't have to. So we're going to see if actually installing the transmitter so close to the gyro, the sensitive gyro, can actually make problems or not. So, yeah. All right, so let me just skip over this. All right, so now we got it in place. Let's just double check everything here. Oh, this is our... This is going to be pretty... Uh oh, so this is not a good idea here. Let's just see if we do it like this. It's a little bit better, but no, this this actually this is keeps this keeps hitting. But what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna try to bend it nice and easy without damaging it. Because worst case scenario, what I'll use is I'll just use the uh, other one provided, which is like the dipolar antenna kind of thing going on. No, so that's good. It's good just enough um, so it's very good here so we're gonna install the TX to control it which is this yellow line if I remember correctly I actually forgot what it's supposed to be it's kind of becoming a little bit of a messy build a little so I'm gonna trim this wire here and now this is gonna be to control it so we can control it through the beta flight OSD with this and I believe on UART6 we'll set the protocol to tramp. 
and we should be able to control it like the diatone actually I'm thinking of um, just taking apart the rebuilt diatone because I'm very unhappy with it and it has some nice components on there like the Raths and um, the Rath 32 ESCs and the Matek VTX I, I just that's uh, to me that's a waste really um, I really hate the diatone so we'll see the new one I just got the new one so we're just gonna see how good that one is actually so hopefully it's somewhat good it's not a waste of cash or it'll probably need another rebuild all right so we got this guy in now we need the video out and I'm gonna need the diagram because I can't remember which one's video out that's totally fine uh, ground this will go to the voltage regulator so we don't need these just yet this is to the receiver all right so just a moment let me just do some wire management all right guys so here's the white line we made for um if you guys remember for the uh, vtx from the part where the camera is so i'm going to ground it from here i'm just going to keep a little bit of slack so let's just uh prepare that right now this is i think one of the most complex builds i've done on the channel and um, hopefully it'll be a good one because it's actually one of the longest quads that's taken me to actually build um, it's not a problem it's just very straightforward but there's just a lot of wiring <clears throat> and that solder is killing me when it goes in my face So we're gonna ground this here. So this is gonna be the ground for the VTX. All right, and we're gonna use that same technique again. And the tip is dirty. That's awesome. And that went in beautiful. So we're going to have room for the positive here later on with the voltage regulator. All right. So this would be the video. Let's double check it inside. So we know this is the camera because they're all together. So this would be the video out. So we're going to go ahead and install it on the bottom one there. So maybe actually I'm going to run this through the bottom here. It'll be a lot nicer cleaner okay, through here right there it's gonna be good and again twisting your wires is very important Trim this a little bit more. It's perfect. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put that right there. For a second, I thought I wasn't recording. I would have just jumped out the window. <laughs> All right, so this is for the receiver that's left, and this is the camera. So there's only two pieces left. Should we try to arm it? I mean, connect a battery to it? Let's leave it for later. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, actually, you know, we have to figure out how much space we have before we can actually see the, um, where we're gonna put the voltage regulator because maybe we won't and hopefully well I mean there's no f there's no filtration at all so I don't know we'll figure it out now so okay back one why isn't it going down it's because of the connector there it's just the connector here so I think we're gonna just end up using the other dipolar 
antenna that comes with the Matek because it's really bad here. Very bad. See, look what happened. I don't know if it's going to keep working or if it broke. Oh, yeah. Anyways, we're going to see and then we'll figure it out when we go fly it. Alright guys, so there was a little problem. Um, actually, I think the voltage regulator either burned or was a broken one. Or it couldn't handle the amount of current that the Matic VTX was pulling. So I ended up just running it straight just from the just no voltage regulator to the uh, Matic VTX and straight from the battery hoping that it does have some kind of filtration in a sort of way and we also got this so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plug it in and as you can see we can get feed so that's very good see so that's very good the OSD is not working but the OSD can be turned on. That usually happens, I don't know why. I just have to, um, what is it? Usually I just have to just enable it and disable it and then it just turns right on. So um, that should be good. So overall, I'm just gonna put it all together, take one last look at it and hopefully take it up for a flight tomorrow if the rain goes away. Can't wait till the weather clears up. Been stuck at home for a couple days now. So overall, I'm very happy, and that's really it right now. So let me just prepare everything. And you know what? I think this one I might do a, and the budget one, I might do a second video to where I show you how I set it up in beta flight and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm going to put this all together, clean up the area, and we come back and take one last look at it. Alright guys, so this is um, drone mesh after a couple days now. Um, I still have not flown it. I went to go fly it today actually and um, I found one of the motors weren't working. Now I know I had the Emax, I have a couple burnt ones and I was just sick of extending the wires so I just completely replaced them. Um, I just replaced them now after I went out flying. So now what do I have here is I actually put the Sunny Sky 2305 2800 kV motors. So these are going to be insane. I accidentally got these instead of the 2480 but you know. What the heck, that we're just gonna do. Anyways, it's a nice color scheme also. And the wires were long, so that's what we're gonna do. So this quad's gonna be basically our introduction to ESC telemetry, and we're gonna see how it works. And that's really it. So uh, I'll be flying this hopefully tomorrow. I'm gonna try to take it out tomorrow to fly. To, the weather's clearing up very good uh, tonight. Today I just had some flights out like around after five, which basically the lighting condition was terrible. So, but I got a couple flights in, but they're just not usable footage at all so yeah overall i'm really loving this i can't wait to see it and i actually got the osd to work and as soon as i turned it on it says do you want it to clone itself i was like what do you mean clone itself so i clicked yes and all of a sudden this popped out <laughs> i'm just kidding guys so, yeah this is just insane no this is the transtech aurora I finally came in he's so tiny it's just unbelievably tiny so you'll see this in the mailbag time, I think, after this video. Um, but yeah, so I wish this one had blue motors too. That would have just been crazy. So that's pretty sweet, huh? Um, well, anyway, so this is going to be our first uh, ESC telemetry. This is the first one of the first, first I believe, four-in-one uh, ESCs that are 32-bit and telemetry capable, I believe. So this is going to be pretty cool, pretty interesting, and it's going to be a battery buster, and I've already ruined five batteries because of the Daito, and I'm not even flying it anymore. So this is not going to be any better, but it's lighter. So let's actually see its final weight here for you guys uh, before we go. So um, let's check it out here. All right. 293 grams so that, that's pretty good I mean it's under 300 if it's under 300 it's decent so I like to hit 250 I don't think I've ever hit below 250 to be honest usually like 250 something 270 and all that kind of crazy stuff but um overall this is going to be pretty interesting and um yeah so if you guys have any questions or any suggestions just feel free to let me know and um, here's an upcoming build, just a little sneak preview. It's this guy, it's the Kevlar version. I managed to fit this without designing and 3D printing something for it.
And um, we're, with the Alice card wouldn't fit on this guy, so um, I got this in also. You'll see it on the mailbag time. We're going to be reviewing this guy. This is basically like the uh, Racer Star. It's a F4S, but this is the Tattoo F4S, so it's a F4 processor. 32-bit uh, ESCs, all built in together with a 5-volt regulator. So it should be pretty interesting, and I believe it does have OSD, yeah. Video in, video out, yeah. With Betaflight OSD. So this is going to be pretty sweet, and the stack is just pretty insane really i'm gonna use that tiny vtx with it and an xm plus receiver or something and we're done for motors i don't know what i'm going to use because i also got the new t motor uh version f3 here 2600 kv these are the ones that just came out i think these are the ones that won the multi gp or something but um yeah these should be pretty interesting so yeah well that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. So I'll keep you updated on this guy. I can't wait to fly him. He's just going to be insane. He's going to ruin my batteries. Um, after I fly him without current limiting, I'm just going to set the, set up the current limiting to, like, I don't know, like 40 amps. I, I don't want it to pass 40 amps. I could totally enjoy it with 40 amps. So, yeah. Thank God for, for, for current limiting. Because this is just ridiculous now. With these motors, there's, there's no point to fly 4S. It's just 5S now, I believe. And I don't know how a 5S would cope with such motors. So, yeah, like for example, the Diatone. Diatone, that's just going to ruin your batteries. It just, it's, it's annihilated my batteries. So right now I have to, I'm thinking, oh, I need to get new batteries. And, well, that's it, guys. So I really, I really hope it helped you out there, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.